Welcome to Risk Roundup. Investors have a power to change the world as they influence not only the growth and development of any idea, innovation, business, industries or nations, but human society and our planet ecosystem, its sustainability and very survival. It is said that the cost of solving the world's most critical problems today runs into the trillions of dollars. So then the obvious question comes is whether nations, its government and philanthropists are allocating appropriate funding that is, necess- that is needed today, that is necessary to make a difference. Probably not, as by some estimates, there is a funding gap that runs in trillions. So how do we bridge the gap to solve the world's most critical problems and meet the goals of sustainable development? The answer perhaps lies in impact investing, an investment approach that expects not only financial return, but also positive social impact that can be actively and accurately measured. There seems to be a great hope in the promise of impact investing, as it has the potential to resolve key shortcomings and gaps of sustainable development goals brought on by traditional financial investment markets. As growing numbers of investors are stepping up to do good while doing well, the rapid growth of the field of impact investing brings many complex challenges and questions, questions about how to evaluate impact and much more. To discuss this further, I'm delighted to welcome Laurie Lenzaker, founder and CEO at Impact Entrepreneur Center. Welcome, Laurie. Uh, we are delighted to have you on Risk Roundup. Well, thank you, Jay Shree. I'm very pleased to be here. Wonderful, Laurie. So, why is there a need for a new investment approach, Laurie? Well, I think you did a fantastic job of, of uh, scoping out the geography uh, of need that we are, we, global humanity, are facing. Uh, in the, this, the early part of the 21st century. Um, indeed, if, you, if uh, one looks at, for example, the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, a, a series of 17 um, challenges, uh, environmental and social challenges, major macro challenges that uh, the United Nations over the years has, has uh, targeted as, as, our, as our biggest challenges. If, if as uh, a number of international agencies have done over the years, one uh, measures or quantifies the costs of uh, effectively dealing with issues of climate change, of poverty, of uh, the, uh, uh, helping the unbanked, those populations of the world who do not have um, access to uh, bank accounts, um, uh, problems with water, clean water, the availability of clean water, uh, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, if you if you quantify these uh, challenges, the uh, the need dwarfs the amount of available capital uh, capital that the philanthropic and philanthropic and governmental sectors have have been putting toward it and are able to put toward it. So in 2006, 2007, 2008, some uh, uh, foundations, uh, Rockefeller Foundation and, and, and several uh, uh, partner think tanks and, and uh, foundations got together and developed um, something called impact investing which is uh, an evolution on a number of things, but among them socially responsible investing, which is uh, a form of investing that's been around for quite some time. It's also called uh, or characterized as negative screening. Impact investing, however, is is quite different than socially responsible uh, investing where one might uh, uh, would, would go through one's investments and take out things that were you know, obviously negative, whether it be, you know, tobacco companies or, or, um, uh, 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 you know, major polluting companies. Impact investing is a very proactive form of investing uh, where, as you were saying in your introductory comments, the investor is seeking financial returns alongside measurable social and or environmental returns. 
and um, the, and the goal of the folks who were working to launch the impact investing this new sector uh, believe very strongly that this really was the most sensible way uh, to unleash use capital markets to unleash the kind of uh, uh, conscious philanthropically minded investment at the scale that is necessary necessary over time to address these massive challenges as uh, as again as uh, uh, laid out in the UN sustainable development goals yes uh, no that is a really good background so Laurie if you are talking to any investor how would you explain that investor the need to generate a measurable beneficial social or environmental impact alongside a financial return you know that uh, we are all may all the investors are looking forward to whenever the investor tries to invest they are thinking of how much profit they will make what will be the return on their investment but they are not used to thinking about what is the impact I am making? What is the product or innovation or idea I am investing in? So these are not, this is not the normal kind of, you know, thought process that goes to, through any investor's mind. So how would you explain or how would you try to change the thought process of any investor? Well, I'm glad you went right to uh, the, the question of brain chemistry, <laughs> uh, which I like to talk about quite a bit. You, all, you also said that it's, it's not... Uh, normal to think in a double or triple bottom line that's an expression we use to uh, uh that that represents the in, in inclusion of social and environmental impact alongside financial uh return um but uh, you say you characterized that kind of investing this this in, impact investing as not normal i would argue actually that the modes of investment, the philosophy, the practice of investment that has been grown up in our uh, Western capital, capitalist culture is the thing that is not normal. Because if you put, put business, the, the, the dominant business paradigm alongside the uh, realities as represented again in the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, of profound ecological uh, 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 stress, of uh, massively, uh, very fast growing populations, particularly in the developing world, that uh, uh, do not have uh, basic amenities to, to live um, stable lives. Uh, if one looks in a clear-eyed way at the role that consumption and conventional traditional commerce has played in pushing us toward what many ecologists and ecological economists say is, uh, is a kind of abyss. Uh, that's not normal. I would argue that a brain chemistry, an investment brain chemistry that puts in financial return, the desire for the justifiable, understandable, uh, necessary financial return alongside measurable social and environmental impact, that's normal. That's a normal brain chemistry. And so what we're, um, what we in, who are advocating and are participating in the impact investing sector are, uh, uh, you know, I think actively working uh, to, to some, to one extent or another to do is to uh, break down those firewalls in the in the in the uh, metaphorically speaking, break down those firewalls in the investment brain that keep the social, the environmental, and the financial separated, and to have just a normal brain uh, uh, flow, blood flow through the brain, so that they are in correspondence with each other. That that it becomes uh, a, a a kind of a of you know, and of course, of course, we want to protect the environment. Of course, we want our uh, investment dollars and the companies that they are supporting to 
uh, be supporting positive, positive uh, social and, and environmental impact. Yes, and I, I think what I see is also the challenge in that it is not that, you know, all the investors that are across nations that they are trying not to, you know, think about the sustainable development or what is going to be the impact of uh, their investment. It's the basic challenge is because we are not used to thinking about the interconnectedness and the interdependencies, all the interconnected risks that happens because of each and every decision that we make we are just not used to thinking about it that my investment what it is the products or innovations that i'm going to you know fund what its impact is going to be you know what would be its positive impact what would be the risk what are the benefits and what are the interconnections those that thought process is not there so yes. that is probably the reason that you know we are not seeing uh, so far we have not seen that uh, approach and then you know now we have a lot of discussions going on about this we have this education and awareness happening all across nations about what is at risk and that is probably driving this uh, uh, change in approach uh, because so far the environmental issues or social issues they were only addressed by philanthropic you know donations or philanthropic organizations and the majority of the investment, the bulk of investment uh, was not focused on that. They were not focused on the financial returns. So this is my assessment that because of the lack of education awareness, that approach was not that. But what is your perspective on what is forcing the change in approach? Ah, good question. Well, certainly um, uh, uh, our educational system. I mean, I, I uh, give talks at and, and mentor at and I'm at different uh, business schools and uh, uh, come into contact with a lot of uh, the folks who are interested in entrepreneurship more generally at, at schools. And it's only been more recently that social entrepreneurship programs have started to proliferate at colleges and universities. And I, it, quite to my dismay, uh, at most, or let's just, yeah, most business schools still to this day um, inculcate the kind of uh, single bottom line dominated uh, mentality that you just described. Now that's changing. And not quite a few business schools have at least some social entrepreneurship courses. Some even are uh, embracing impact investing. I, I've been mentoring at MIT Sloan School's new impact investing initiative, which is very, very, uh, it, it has been a wonderful experience and, and, and terrific to see. Um, but these things are still quite rare and uh, they need to change. Now, what, one of the things that's fascinating to me is that a lot of the change that is happening is happening, is coming from the younger generations. You know, the millennial generation in particular, those who are in their early 30s and 20s, they, uh, and then demographic studies really reveal this pretty clearly, they really look at the world quite differently than the older generations. And, uh, and these are people, you know, pe people in, in say my generation uh, grew up you know, becoming aware, you know, that we were still in the Cold War. We had a lot uh, um, the major concerns of the day internationally looked quite a bit different than, than they do today. The, the younger generations have grown up with climate change. Uh, they have grown up with uh, knowledge, or many of them grown up with knowledge that we are now in the, have entered into the uh, uh, Anthropocene you know, a, 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 a geological age that's defined by human impact um, and that uh, we are uh, currently in the uh, sixth great mega extinction of species that is by and large human cause. So, you know, the younger generations have grown up and, are, and, and uh, I think it's a success of the educational system that many of them are aware of these challenges and have really internalized them to the extent that we see that millennials 
are in are much more interested than older generations in uh, connecting their values often strong environmental and social values to the kinds of work that they want to do in the world and to the and to what they want to do with their money and what we have alongside that is the greatest transfer of wealth that has happened in human history that is going beginning now to to go to the millennial generation so we see on many levels that uh, it is this younger generation of people in their 20s and early 30s who are coming into a, a great deal of wealth who have a different set of expectations and values who are driving this move toward impact investing and it's a very very helpful thing that is true, that is true. now what are now, some what are some characteristics of impact investing that you see you know from your perspective yes well i think the uh, global impact investing network uh, the gin is a probably the best resource at the moment for uh, scientific uh, studies on the growth and current status of the impact investing um, uh, sector, and um, you know they, their latest report puts the amount of, uh, of of money that's being invested in 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 uh, impact investing funds, particularly at around $60 billion. Now that's a, a just really a, a, a cross section or a subsection of uh, research that's taken from their members, which are a lot of big banks, a lot of big investors. So there's a lot of uh, m money there, but it's only a slice of a larger global impact investing Dynamics so, and no one really. I mean, I don't. I, I see. I see different figures for how much impact investment is being done, um, in you know this year as opposed to last year. The projections are all quite clear, and and there's a lot of agreement that in the next ten to twenty years, the space is just going to continue to. Uh, Escalate in terms of the amount of uh, money that's that's being put into impact investing, whether it be um, you know early growth stage companies or or uh, or more established companies into uh, social impact bonds, into other form uh, debt debt instruments that uh, are focused on. Right. Um, you know, measurable social and environmental return. Yes. Now that's the key, the measurable social impact. So this that is perhaps the hallmark of in, impact investment. Investing is that the commitment of the investor to measure and report the social and environmental performance and progress of any investment that they are making. So how is the impact measured? That is something, you know, I'm sure our global viewers and listeners will want to understand that how are you know, investors or the impact investment community is measuring that impact. Yes. Well, we're in. Uh, we're still in the early years of this, and so uh, while there is tremendous effort being made by a number of different agencies to uh, come up with kind of more universally agreed on measurement systems, uh, there isn't. I think it's fair to say there isn't one measurement system that is uh, the go-to measurement system. And that's not a bad thing because uh, different you know, companies are doing different things. Uh, they are at different stages of their existence. Um, it get, measuring social and environmental impact in a deep way has a lot of complexities to it. And then you add the diversity of, of types of enterprise and that, of course, um, exponentially increases the complexity of, of measurement. Now, having said that, there are uh, uh, things like the IRIS metrics, which provide a, uh, a very strong, compre I think, comprehensive uh, series of, of metrics, of vocabulary for uh, uh, 
all the different ways you can you can uh, types of measurements, so social measurements and environmental measurements. So that's a very widely used set of metrics. Uh, the, there is not one standard that everyone uses. It's not like a, there is no global standard for impact uh, measurement. No, and you um, another another. Uh, mm, Another system that I have tremendous respect for is the certified B Corporation uh, uh, assessments, which is done by a nonprofit organization in Philadelphia called B Lab. And they have developed over the last 10 or so years a quite a sophisticated way of certifying um, the ESG, so the Environmental, Social, and Governments, go Governance. Um, uh, uh, activities and processes of, of companies and, and companies that get a score of 80 or above gets get a certified get a certification. Mm -hmm. There are currently approximately 2,000 companies in the United States and international and also now internationally that have that are certified uh, companies of larger scale like Patagonia and Ben and Jerry's and the technology company Etsy, and then smaller and smaller mid-sized companies as well. I, I have a tremendous respect for that. I, I started one of the uh, first certified B corporations a number of years ago, and uh, very much value value that. Um, Sustainalytics is an organization that has put a lot of energy over the years in developing uh, measurement systems uh, for for impact, and there are quite a few others. Uh, and and um, there are quite a few good ones. Now, for big companies, uh, there are a lot of existing larger companies that are uh, very interested in doing sustainability reporting and uh, or ESG reporting. And many of those companies uh, develop their own uh, measurement systems internally which is interesting it's somewhat problematic because since there aren't that it makes because they're it they vary from company to company it makes it very difficult to compare one company's to another's uh, and the un environment program came out with a report last year that actually criticized the uh, sustainability reports of a uh, hundred or so major companies that they reviewed because you know for in part for the reason i just explained that they uh, they don't have um, uh, they, they don't have a, a common standard of measurement that that makes them easy easy to uh, to compare um, there's a lot more that can be said about this i think we're on a continuum however that uh, is 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 very positive and that there is over there will be over time i'm pretty confident over time that there will be uh, a few measurements standards that that or measurement systems that become standard and uh, uh but we want we want to always have the flexibility to adapt what we're doing to new knowledge that that uh, uh that appears new 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 context and new understandings about what's going on in the world and how our our activities in businesses can uh, uh, can impact those things so um it's it's, it's a continuous it's in it's in an early stage so there is still time for it to mature the whole you know uh, impact investment concept and uh, like you said that there is still a need for uh, keeping that uh, opening so that we understand more, we grasp more, and you, we go from there. So from your perspective, Lori, what areas, sectors, industries, or nations or regions, which ideas, innovations, they are considered very attractive for impact investment uh, at, at this moment? It's hard to make generalizations. I think what, uh, what we see are, uh, is, a, is a very wide spectrum of types of impact investments. Uh, and uh, uh, different impact investors are interested in different sectors, are interested in different geographies, and and so they will see 
uh, with the lead, you know, with their distinctive uh, lens, wearing their distinctive lens, uh, things that are particularly attractive that might not be that exciting for some other impact investors. So certainly there's a lot of activity in things like renewable energy. Uh, and um, that's all that's that's very, very positive, uh, I, both in the developed world as well as in the developing world. Uh, there's a lot of activity. Well, I, I see I have a my network, my uh, impact entrepreneur is a global network of in, entrepreneurs, investors and scholars of social and environmental innovation. And so I uh, through that network, I have the benefit of seeing a lot of different types of both companies, as well as uh, I get to talk to quite a, a wide range of investors who are interested in these companies. And uh, I see very interesting things happening in Brazil, in India, in Africa, uh, and uh, uh, also very much here in the United States. The, the MacArthur Foundation and a couple other foundations this, in this last year committed, uh, I think it was at least $100 million to a project called Benefit Chicago, which is a uh, effort to seed and establish uh, impact companies and impact uh, agencies in, in the Chicago area. And I think we're gonna see increasing amounts of what some of us call regional place-based uh, impact investing happening in different parts that, of the world. That is interesting, you know, good information there. How, how big is this impact investment ecosystem if we are looking at, you know, not just uh, uh, nationally, but uh, globally, how big it is? Uh, well, again, you can look at, you can look at the dollars that are, are being invested as one measurement uh, I know that in my network, which I started five and a half years ago, I have uh, over 13,000 members. And again, these are entrepreneurs, investors, students, as well uh, and, and scholars, academics, uh, uh, professors who are, who are very interested in this space. Uh, I, there's just it's it's growing very fast. I think that's fair to say. I, I can't give you a number of how many investors are active, or uh, because new ones are starting up all the time. If you go to Impact Base, which is a uh, one of the databases of impact funds, I think you you'll uh, and you register to access the information in there. I think you'll be quite impressed with the 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 number of different funds, impact investing funds that are in existence and, and the uh, uh, the range of uh, their interest, those funds' interests. Great, great. No, so definitely we will, uh, uh, where is this information available? Can you share that with our? Google Impact Base, okay. you, you, will, okay. you will access that, that website. Good, thanks for sharing that. So I'm sure, you know, people will, uh, take, a, take this opportunity to go and take a look at that and understand, you know, more about the impact investment space. Now, from your perspective, you like you said, in your network, there are a lot of investors who are interested in impact investing. What kind of investors do you see that are drawn towards doing more about impact investment and not just, you know, traditional investment? Mm -hmm. Well, again, there's a wide spectrum. There are uh, traditional investors who are kind of putting their toes in the water of impact investing and just trying, trying a little bit. Or and uh, and then you have on the other side people who some of some investors who might have been deep in the socially responsible investment universe who are now fully that you know impact investing is all they do. And uh, um, I you know I. I could point you to dozens of, of funds that uh, are very explicitly focused on um, on impact investing and uh, have developed their own criteria, their own investment criteria for how they will measure the impact of the companies that they um, th that they're investing in, and uh, um, so it's it's a uh, 
it's a wide range. And then in terms of the expectations of investors, I think this is worth worth noting too. There's a few assumptions out out in the world about impact investing. For example, that um, impact investing means that you need to expect a lower rate of financial return in order to get that social and environmental um, measurable social environmental impact. While that's true in some cases, and there are quite a few investors who are quite fine with saying, I'll take a little bit less of return if I if I can uh, see my dollars going to really, really positive social and or environmental work. Uh, on the other hand, there are uh, increasing numbers of examples of funds, of uh, uh, private equity deals into companies where the uh, returns uh, match or, or exceed the market returns. So it's a wide spectrum and you, one can't um, make a, assumptions about um, kind of the, the limits of, uh, of, of financial return on impact investments. Sure. Now, sure. Yeah. I, I also hear that religious institutions are getting into impact investing and you know uh, apart from like family offices or pension funds or private foundations or you know uh, ngos so that is very interesting development the religious institutions have begun to you know enter in this space and uh, i'm sure you know with the resources they have they will be able to make a huge impact yes well we've uh, seen here in the united states the episcopal church the unitarian church uh, and other uh, Christian denominations have uh, been doing socially responsible investment and now impact invest in investment. Uh, one of the most exciting and hopeful developments in the last year was that the Catholic Church, uh, as led by the Pope, uh, embraced impact investing in a massive way. I mean, the Pope is having is organizing impact investing conferences at the Vatican. That's incredible. Um, but this is a, a man who, who really has a good grasp on the uh, of issues of poverty, of, 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 of the challenge of climate change and other major issues and, and just is smart enough to understand that uh, impact investing is uh, a, uh, our greatest hope for, for really effectively dealing with a lot of these issues yes yeah, so so it seems you know that a lot of people also having the same kind of thought process now from you are a part of this network you have created this uh, uh, whole uh, ecosystem around you that it has you know all the students all the investors all the uh, you know innovators they're all coming together so based on your experience observation what are some notable global examples of impact investing that you are seeing currently mm -hmm. oh boy there are so many interesting ones right now um well i'll give you a couple of examples of companies that i'm working with and helping at the moment i uh, impact entrepreneur is a network a global network I, it's also a, a consulting company and we're also now establishing also the Impact Entrepreneur Center for Social and Environmental Innovation, which will be the educational and, and incubation arm of, of the Impact Entrepreneur universe. Uh, the, uh, because to give a couple of examples of, of companies that are very interesting to me, I'm working with a sustainable clothing company uh, called Rambler's Way, and that is uh, founded by um, the fam founder and family that is one of the great social enterprise pioneers. Uh, they did the company Toms of Maine, which is a, a very successful uh, uh, a natural uh, toothpaste and, and, and other product company. They're, they're now moving into pioneering the sustainable clothing uh, uh, business and uh, or you know, organic fibers, very very organic. Trying to use a uh, uh, bioregional supply chain, very very interesting company. Uh, more internationally, I'm working with the uh, 
uh, one of the earliest and most respected impact investing fund managers who used to work at Deutsche Bank is uh, started a new uh, is starting a new fund called SEMA Funds, and they are focused on off the grid solar uh, solutions for Africa, in Africa, and uh, so that's a uh, uh, that's a uh, a fund that can accommodate uh, individual investors as all the way up to foundation uh, investments and pension fund investments and, and other things. So um, uh, I've seen uh, a very interesting project uh, in Brazil that's working to uh, deal with the employment, um, underemployment problems they have in, in the big cities in Brazil. Uh, I'm um, working with a company that's uh, developing, sorry? How would they go by solving that kind of problem, underemployment? How would uh, they address that? What is the approach? The one in Brazil? Well, the one in Brazil. Yes. Yes. Uh, While well, they are uh, collaborating with a uh, department at Harvard University that has uh, identified pro pro a big problem in um, big urban areas in the developing world and also in areas of the developed world. Um, uh, part of the problem that they see is that the uh, commuting time of people in many jobs is so long that, in th that they're getting paid an amount of money that necessitates them living very far out from the center, from, from their workplace. Uh, because that's what they can afford. And they end up spending hours upon hours just commuting to and from work. So this project is actually, and, the, and the, is uh, building off of this research that they've done at Harvard University to create um, uh, both kind of communities that have living as well as, um, uh, uh, you know, work, Work, their workplace all located within walking distance from each other. So they're essentially creating mini cities on the outskirts of big cities. Uh, and that, uh, that this, they see this as being a, a major driver of employment and just improve, improving quality of life to a, a very substantial degree. So there's a lot more to that project, but that's a little bit of a... Uh, yeah. No, it is very interesting, definitely. Now, from from the perspective of investors, what kind of risk do you think they face when they decide to go for impact investing? Uh, it, it, I think it, it, it ranges a lot. I, uh, it depends on the, the stage of company. If you're doing uh, equity investments, it de depends on the stage of company that you're looking at. It, you know, obviously a, a seed stage company that's not at market yet and is just developing its idea is going to be a lot riskier than a, a company that's, you know, already producing $5 million, $10 million of revenue a year and, and wants growth capital to to uh, expand their uh, the range of their, their products and services. Um, the, uh, the, the off the grid solar fund that I was describing earlier has a uh, quite a sophisticated model where you can have different risk levels um, of, of investment within this one fund. So you can uh, come in with a uh, kind of a higher risk but higher return uh, investment, or you can uh, be much more conservative and uh, and yet and uh, be uh, have priority of payment over the higher risk capitals but your your return is going to be less uh, right. than than these other investors so boy i um it's hard to make a a blanket statement but uh you know i deal a lot with early stage companies and whether you're talking about impact companies or traditional companies, um, 
the 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 uh, success, the rate of success of uh, entrepreneurial companies. The reality is, it's not very high. Some you know some some figures put it as low as five percent of of uh, startups reach a kind of level of maturity that uh, would be considered a, a commercial success. Some put them up, put put that figure as high as twenty percent. But still, it's it's a risky thing to uh, to start any kind of business. I don't. Uh, one, I think you'll, you'll find different opinions from different people on whether an impact company is more or less risky than a, a traditional company. Sure, sure. No, I understand that. Now, many, it seems that many impact investors, they choose to invest through funds whose social, environmental and financial goals, they match their own. So based on your knowledge, what are some impact investing funds that are out there currently? Uh, lots of them, uh, and there. Some of them are uh, independent funds. Some of them are, are funds that uh, have been put together by larger financial institutions. Uh, some, you know, some of the more I think uh, most respected impact investors with funds would be, uh, well, Leapfrog Advent uh, Ventures is a very uh, uh, respected one, Equilibrium is another excellent one. Uh, RSF Finance is a uh, a nonprofit uh, investment impact investor, but you know definitely one of the most respected in the field. Uh, they do debt uh, financing. Right now, how are these impact investments made? Are there any? Uh, specific platforms that are used. I mean, when they can invest in those funds, the invest impact investors. Uh, but other than that, are there any specific platforms that are used for making inv impact investments? Well, yes. There's a lot of ex been a lot of experimentation since very, really the earliest days in creating platforms that would, would whose goal was to. Uh, you know, spur on more activity in the sector and to make it easier for uh, people interested in investing uh, to, to find quality investment deals. So yes, there are quite a few. I uh, actually, my uh, one of my startups, which was one of the first B corporations uh, listed on one of the, the well actually the first impact investing platform, uh, Mission Markets, a number of years ago, and was the first uh, company to close a transaction on that platform. And uh, so I think that that uh, that, that these efforts to, to create um, platforms where investors can, can and, and entrepreneurial companies can meet each other uh, are are very very important. I, it, it's it's been a challenge to find a uh, uh, um, to, to create a platform where uh, there's an equivalent comfort level uh, for uh, foreign entrepreneurs and also investors. Where they uh, so there's still a lot of work going on around that, and uh, I don't I wouldn't want to point to one or two at this point, uh, because there's a, there's quite a few of them, and they're, they're, uh, there's, there's a lot of interesting experimentation, and yet I don't think that there's one or two that stand out to my, to my idea. Sure. Now, do we have any reliable data on the social returns of impact investing so far? I would go to the, the gen.org. The Global Impact Investing Network does a as a, has a very good library of, of research and reports uh, on on the sector, and they do an annual. Well, they do a number of annual reports on the sector that uh, you you can look at. They just came out with one a, a couple months ago that is well worth looking at. Okay. No, I'm glad you uh, shared that information. Now, what is what do you see is the future of impact investing? 
I mean, earlier you mentioned that young people are really yes. interested in this, and millennials, they are they really want to go back to the society. So it seems yes. that this trend is going to expand. Where do you see this going? Well, the projections from those doing the serious research suggests that the impact investing sector, instead of talking about billions of dollars, will be, will be talking about trillions of dollars in the next 10 to 20 years. So, uh, my personal uh, preference or, or, or hope for the space is that the brain chemistry of impact investing and, the, and, the, and that corollary brain chemistry of business building by entrepreneurs and, and, and uh, executives and others, that, that impact just becomes the way we do business. That, that it, as, as we were talking about at the beginning, uh, that, that we come to see this as the normal, healthy brain chemistry for business and, and uh, investment. And frankly, as somebody who spent 26 27 years professionally, almost all of it focused on, uh, in, in one way or another, on sustainability. We have to get to this place. We don't really have a choice. We have to move away from the old paradigm as quickly as possible. And impact investing really is, is uh, um, uh, you know, a, a beautiful expression of that healthy brain chemistry. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, investors have so much power that, I mean, an investment that is considered socially responsible uh, or where they could make impact is because of the nature of the business or idea or innovation in which the investors would invest. So if they decide that we are not going to invest in any businesses that uh, produces or sells, you know, products that are really bad for the society, for the kids, for the, uh, for the environment, for the social justice, any you know area, then then they will have the power to stop that because without investment, that uh, those businesses are not going to succeed. So, investors have a lot of you know power in this. So, what do you think would be the common theme for socially responsible investment when you know investors start thinking about uh, in doing impact investing? A common theme. Well, um, I, I, I think there we're talking about, I think the, it, 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 rather, rather than theme, I'd rather talk about underlying uh, motives and values, motivations and values. Uh, we are an increasingly globalized society. Yes, the fact of, global, of, of that globalization is, uh, creates a lot of insecurities and, and stresses. Um, as, as we're seeing playing out in, in different parts of the world, including here in the United States. However, it is happening, um, and it calls into question at, at every point, what kind of a global humanity do we want to be? Uh, do we want to be insular? Do we want to build walls? Do we want to uh, uh, separate ourselves from uh, others? Uh, or do we want to be inclusive? Do we want to uh, recognize and embrace our responsibilities to, to others, especially the less fortunate, and also those who don't have voices, such as the, the, non, the more than human world, the, the, uh, the many species and, and uh, the ecosystems that sustain us and the rest of, the, of, of, of those who inhabit the planet. And, uh, to align our ways of doing business in the world more effectively with um, these social and ecological realities. And uh, I think that um, impact investing and impact entrepreneurship is uh, as, as good a way we have at the moment to, uh, to do that alignment or realignment. Yes, it's very true. Now, we briefly talked about the funds uh, where, you know, investors uh, who are interested in doing impact funding, they, you know, just uh, uh, in invest in. But there are also something called social impact bonds. Would you like to share some information about social, what are social impact bonds and 
how does it benefit impact investors anyone who would like to you know invest in uh, those kind of bonds if you don't mind sure well i would point uh, you to social finance as as one of the pioneers and uh, of, of of the social impact bond also called the pay for success model um and and this is a, a very interesting uh, 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 impact investing instrument where uh, companies are funded often by by, by government uh, government funding uh, to assume services that have heretofore been done by nonprofit organizations or by uh, or by governmental agencies and that the return the financial return is based entirely on whether uh, the company is, you know meets metrics or certain metrics or goals, um, and the the presumption is that the the company by uh, will will do the, do it in a, a more efficient and more scalable manner than either the nonprofits or the government agencies. So this is a uh, uh, an instrument social impact bonds that were developed in Massachusetts, where I'm based in, in, in social finance there and also in London, and uh, yet now are being experimented with all over the world. I know, you know, Australia is very big on social impact bonds right now. Lots of big cities in the United States are, are very interested in, in social impact bonds. Uh, it's still early in um, understanding how successful that model is. I think there's a lot of very positive signs. Uh, for example, there's a lot of, uh, there are a number of impact bonds uh, that are focused on recidivism, recidivism. So, you know, for people who are, who are leaving prison, getting them back into societies and, and putting, giving them uh, the support they need so that they don't end up back in prison. And uh, uh, it's still early. Um, the track record, you know, it, SIBs have only been around for a few years, and uh, so we're still kind of seeing, you know, the track records coming together. But the early signs are very hopeful, and just the model itself, I think, shows a uh, uh, reveals a, a level of experimentation and creativity around, uh, you know, financial uh, and investment uh, practices that is just very, very exciting. Yes, it is uh, definitely very exciting. Now, although it's possible for impact investors to achieve social impact along with market rate returns, it is not easy to do that in the probably desired time frame that you know a lot of investors are uh, looking for having that kind of uh, return. So, when do you think will uh, impact investing create real impact? If you are looking at the time frame. For any investor, how many years they should be prepared bef uh, to, you know, uh, for their investment to take before they see some actual, you know, uh, impact that uh, they can uh, measure? Yeah, great question. And again, there's a very wide range uh, of expectations among in in impact investors as far as when they want, when and how they get their returns. Um, one term that you would will find consistently arises with respect to impact investing capital and returns is patience, patient capital. Um, many social enterprises need time to find to find their market, to find their niche, to to fill that out, and to um, and to grow a business toward profitability. And in not every case, but in many cases, it, it takes a good amount of time to do that. And, uh, uh, and so the, the model that's you know, very much used in, uh, in Silicon Valley for tech companies with venture, especially venture capital, where, you know, they're looking for a three to five year, many multiple uh, return, you know, X returns, in, in many cases, not all, but in many cases, that model is not a good fit for an, an, a social impact company. Um, Detroit, there's some, some very interesting things happening in the city of Detroit, which, uh, uh, as you may know, has been through very, very hard times, is uh, one of the most uh, depressed 
economically depressed cities in the country, been through bankruptcy. Um, there, there was a study recently uh, by uh, research done by a Boston College professor um, that uh, he looked at two different accelerators in, um, in Detroit, one of which is uh, a business accelerator that's kind of modeled on the traditional Y Combinator model that's, that's uh, you know, build it fast, uh, get to market fast, scale and then scale fast and then exit fast. Uh, and and compared that to a very, very different accelerator model that they're innovating in Detroit called the Green Accelerator, which is a very patient capital, um, don't rush it to success, uh, uh, you know, f find your market carefully. Um, and uh, they found that it, using that more patient approach, there is a lot less what we call entrepreneurial flight which means that you know an entrepreneur gets a company to a stage of uh, um, a certain stage of evolution and then gets attracted to go to another place, Boston, New York City, to uh, where they might have more resources or it's it, 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 so they leave the place that really needs them the most. So uh, this is an example. Detroit's a very good example of how impact investing and uh, social enterprise. Um, are kind of working from a different, you know, this different brain chemistry. How, while the expectations of returns and the timeline vary greatly, there is a, um, uh, a there's less rush. There's there's more patience, yes. uh, both on the investors' parts as well as on the social entrepreneurs' parts. Sure, yes, absolutely. Now, whatever an investor's intention, the fundamental question is whether an investment actually has social impact or has a potential for social impact. So what is the process to decide whether an investment actually has any social impact potential? Well, I think, again, this is varies, will vary according to the investor. Uh, Impact entrepreneur is a term that I coined five and a half years ago. I call it uh, social entrepreneurship 2.0. Um, the, the reasoning for that is that uh, the impact entrepreneur not only believes it's important to be creating social impact businesses or businesses that are doing measurable good in the world, but also believes you need to build an ecosystem, a supportive ecosystem around it. And uh, whether it work, that means working, collaborating with the business, the the governmental side, uh, the uh, uh, in, investing side, um, to 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 create an affirming ecosystem. The um, so impact in entrepreneurs um, believe that um, you need well impact is defined for the impact entrepreneur network as the rigorous application of blended value. Okay, the rigorous application of blended value. When we address the question of, well, what makes an impact company, a social impact company, impactful? Uh, yes, there are lots of different ways of measuring, but what I come down to constantly is the rigor, the demonstrated rigor which, with which a company, and for that matter, an investor, is approaching this triple bottom line, double or triple bottom line uh, exercise or experiment, experiment that we're, that they're engaged with. And, uh, and you can pick that up in lots of different ways. Uh, you can also see through kind of false attempts. They, those who have been in the space for a long and for a while can, can are, are get, get increasingly uh, adept at seeing uh, less than uh, rigorous efforts at um, building business, you know, impact businesses, where the impact is maybe more show or PR than than actually, um, you know, something that that is measurable and uh, uh, in contributing, you know, authentically. Yes, uh, yes, definitely. Now it seems that there is a theoretical framework that underlies the assessment of impact that may and makes a distinction between 
outputs and outcomes. So uh, here the output is the product or service produced by any business or enterprise and the outcome is the effect of the output in improving people's lives. So the impact investor needs to answer like two questions probably. First, to what extent will the intended output occur? And second is that uh, what to what extent will the output contribute to the intended outcome uh, that they are they were all hoping for in the uh, especially impacting people's lives. So is there a framework that uh, the impact investors use that is around this theoretical framework? Hmm. Almost all of them are trying to develop or find that framework so that they can um, tell the story to their investors. To, if, they, if they're a fund or something, they need to tell the, the story and, and provide uh, the evidence, uh, that measurement evidence to, to their client investors. Uh, or if it's if they're their own investors they and, and they're entering into the space they want to do it for themselves um, it varies yeah it just it, it varies I, I know a fund that is uh, based here in the Northeast of the United States that's folk an impact fund that's focused very much on the uh, food and agriculture sector and um, they're working very hard they're looking at existing measurement systems. They're, they're working with um, MIT uh, Sloan School to s develop potentially new new metrics and new measurements that are really tailored for their investment philosophies or investment philosophy. Uh, and that and that kind of uh, but what, when one looks at that effort that they're making, when I look at that, I see that they're trying to do it in a very rigorous, authentic way, uh, trying as much hard as they can to, to, to base it in, in, uh, on uh, legitimate measurables, but also, and this is a very important piece of the equation, to look at that social and environmental impact within a global, what, what some of us call global sustainability context. So to, to, if you may have a fund or a, in, in a company that's doing work locally or, or regionally, uh, but part of the equation really needs to be you know, aware and attentive and responsive to the large macro uh, challenges that may or may not be uh, you know, Im immediately obvious, you know, in their local sphere of activity. Climate change, for example. Yes. Um, are are so, uh, and this is a this is a problem that a lot of the big companies have in their reporting. The United Nations Environment Programs report of last year that I mentioned, where they looked at a hundred sustainability reports of big corporations. One of their other their one of their big criticisms of all those reports was that none of them will put their measurements within uh, a global sustainability context. So they, they would look at what they did last year uh, on waste stream, you know, on their waste stream uh, uh, processing. And then they look at it this year and they say, well, we improved this metric by 10%. But uh, are they uh, putting that within um, a, a global set of measurables that deal with waste production globally or, or climate emissions and the need to bring global climate emissions down to, uh, to, to, you know, certain levels, whether it be 350 uh, parts per million or 400 or, or what have you. So um, this whole measurement thing is very complex. So but it's a necessary complexity that we just have to get used to uh, working with. Sure, no, that definitely I understand that. Now, the, it seems there is a dark side to impact investment too, because there are a lot of reports about dubious marketing claims, you know, about the impact investing business and the, how they, uh, you know, some green bonds, how they are floated or how, you know, some uh, opportunities are floated, which are not actually, you know, the impact, 
the ones that would literally classify under the impact investment uh, uh, framework or uh, criteria so what what would you where would you be concerned you know looking at the reality of how you know human nature is you know they always try to take advantage of anything that uh, wherever they are able to uh, take advantage of. So what kind of challenges do you see where uh, the impact investment field would get a you know, uh, bad uh, image or publicity because of those kind of uh, uh, incidents happening? Yes. Uh, well, just to give one extreme example of what you're talking about, a year or two ago, there was a, uh, a new impact fund that was started uh, by people who uh, who said, well, our impact fund is going to be uh, uh, focused on gun manufacturers, you know, fund investing in them because, you know, having guns is good. And uh, uh, also they, they felt uh, uh, fossil fuel production uh, investments were impactful in a positive way because it was giving people more fuel. You know, for most people who are in the impact space, that was a tremendous distortion of the uh, values and, and uh, uh, goals of impact investing. And uh, so you, we, uh, uh, um, but we, we see in that case, uh, uh, a, some people who wanted to uh, take advantage of, um, uh, of, of the impact investing uh, excitement, the excitement around impact investing, and turn it to their own their own purposes. Um, I, I think then there's there and there's a lot in between. Uh, there's a lot. Of, there's a, a, a geography of um, practices in between that extreme and the best of impact investing that is um, requires just a lot of attention and uh, uh, discernment. Uh, for example, there are some large, quite a few large in, uh, in banks and financial institutions are, have started impact investing, what they think they call impact investing nodes. Uh, for example, one of the largest um, re retirement fund companies started uh, impact an impact investing, series of impact investing funds uh, a year or two ago, and they've gotten some criticism from some people who are who are deep into the impact investing space, uh, saying that this is not really impact investing. If anything, it's this negative screening, socially responsible uh, investing that a lot of companies, a lot of investors have been doing for years, but it's not very proactive. It's not, uh, um, um, the, their, measure, their ways of measuring it, of the, the social environmental impact are very light, L-I-T-E. Uh, and, um, and so they, they've come into, uh, been criticized from certain sectors. On the other hand, some, some people will look at their efforts to create impact investing nodes and, and say, okay, these are baby steps, but baby steps forward. And, uh, and over time they will hopefully get more sophisticated and get more, uh, impactful so you know it's not a uh, it's not always an easy determination it's often not an easy determination of, of what's a legitimate impact yeah. investment approach and what isn't yeah, absolutely absolutely i mean there are always a lot of uh, issues that we need to tackle in whenever there is an emerging field like this and there are obviously with impact investing also there are potential limitations and we need to overcome that uh, and uh, based on your experience, what issues do you think that needs to be tackled immediately for e impact investment or impact investing to make a broader impact all across nations? Well, I think there's a, a, a number of things that can be, should be done and can be done. And there's a lot of efforts that are being made on the governmental side. You know, the Obama administration has been very, very strong in supporting uh, the uh, uh, build, helping to build infrastructure for impact investing, um, and a number of the number of, uh, a, a small number of foundation, bigger foundations have been very, very helpful in developing the space. But I, one thing that I'm 
particularly um, concerned by is the slow, relative slow movement into the impact investing space by the majority of private foundations, especially, especially here in the United States. Um, there's over a, a half a trillion, maybe three quarters of a trillion dollars of money in the endowments of foundations, just here in the United States alone. But we know from the Foundation Center's studies of the last couple of years that uh, less than 5% of those foundations are, in, are doing impact investing with their endowment funds. And uh, about 15% are doing uh, what we call program-related investments, which are generally low-cost low loans uh, uh, to companies, impact companies, uh, that, come, that are made through their program program allotments uh, of, of funds. Um, this is far too little. Private foundations have a explicit charitable mission and um, their investment practices should all ideally be in full alignment with, the, with their charitable missions, which in most cases have so, you know, are social and, and environmental. And um, so that, they're moving very, very slowly in the direction of impact investing. There's a, a great concern about, well, how are they going to do it? And um, there's, there's, a, there's a, a strong self-preservation motive that's, that's uh, a part of, the, of, of many foundations' considerations about impact investing, even as they you know, will say publicly that they want to go in this direction. So that's a, um, that's a big problem for me because foundations can and should be playing a role in the space that other impact investors, some other, many other impact investors are, are, are not well set up to do. For example, higher risk capital. That's uh, helping to fund early stage companies that are uh, maybe pre-market or just after market and, and just in a very in a vulnerable space. Some, uh, many, many people call this the valley of the entrepreneurial valley of death where uh, capital, it's beyond the seed stage, but it's before the growth stage. Capital that uh, is it just by its nature, higher risk. Foundations, in my opinion, should be uh, helping to uh, to fill that hole in, in the in the uh, financing of, of uh, developing impact companies. So that's that's one area that I'm uh, yeah I'm give, I give a lot of attention to because I think that it change significant changes or progress in that area will will help the uh, help the space immeasurably. Yes. Yes, so it, I, I understand what you are saying. Now, it seems to me, it seems that impact investing is like everyone's affair. Uh, and the way we, we would put a risk group is that it is an NGIOA issue. NGIOA means nations, it's government, industries, organizations, and academia, because it engages governments as impact investments offer opportunities for more efficient delivery of public services. It engages NGOs and organizations because from the nonprofits that design and implement projects to individual recipients of all different kinds of social programs. And it involves businesses, industries, ranging from entrepreneurs and uh, everyone that is a part of their ecosystems to investors. And it involves university academia as, because they are the important drivers in developing the market through education and training. And like uh, what you are doing with MIT as you are mentoring the young students. So, I think this is every component of a nation is impacted by impact investing and they, they are directly and indirectly benefiting from impact investing and they needs to be a part of impact invest, uh, investing. So you have started an impact entrepreneur center. Uh, would you like to share with our global viewers and listeners what are its goals and what challenges you are facing? and what would you like to convey, uh, you know, going forward about uh, the broader uh, promise and potential of impact investment and where you and million, uh, thousands of others probably, I won't say millions at this point, uh, thousands of others who are trying to make an impact through their initiatives and efforts. Yes. Well, the Impact Entrepreneur Center 
beyond being a uh, provide enabling on us to provide more resources to the Impact Entrepreneur Network, which again is um, over thirteen thousand people around the world uh, with educational remote learning opportunities and, and other resources that this center will is developing. Uh, be, Beyond that, the center is very, very much focused on piloting a new vision for economic, regional economic development, so which we're calling a place-based impact economy. The kind of collaboration between academia, government, government and business, uh, and the nonprofit sector, this this collaboration, in my opinion, and in, in the work of our center, should be focused on building entire economies that are impact. So that that are triple bottom line, blended value, whatever the term you're most comfortable using. But that uh, the you know economies that are def you know regional economies that are uh, have an abundance of triple bottom line businesses that are being funded by impact investments and that this is what a given region does economically. Uh, it becomes the dominant mode of business. That's that's my vision, that's our, the impact entrepreneur's mission and we're working to pilot that regional model here in, in Massachusetts. Thank you, Lori, uh, for participating in this roundup today. We appreciate your thoughtful insight on impact investing. Our global viewers and listeners would benefit tremendously from the information you provided on impact investing and its benefits globally and also about uh, uh, your initiative and how it is going to benefit uh, so many people across the nation. So even if a single individual or entity can come up with an idea to innovate, using impact investing and bring the much needed sustainable development based on the discussion we had today this risk round of dialogue has been of service and we thank you for that well it's been my pleasure jayshree i uh, i love talking about impact investing and, and impact entrepreneurship so it's been a, a real pleasure great thank you laurie so impact investing is a growing necessity as how money is invested today is crucial for what the world will look like in the coming tomorrow Risk Group Cybersecurity Risk Research Center and Strategic Security Risk Research Center are created for this very reason to identify, evaluate, and manage the risk facing NGIOA in CTS, that means nations, its government, industries, organizations, and academia in cyberspace, geospace, and space, and discuss, debate, and define necessary frameworks, structure, processes, tools, and technologies to manage the security risk of not only the digital global age, but also of the coming technological superconvergence. We at Risk Group believe that risk management, security, and peace walk together hand in hand. Though security is related to management of threats and peace to the management of conflict, risk management is related to management of security vulnerabilities as well as management of conflict. And it is not possible to conceive any one of the three without the existence of the other two. All three concepts feed into each other. We believe that the security we build for ourselves is precarious and uncertain until it is secure for everyone across nations. Tradition becomes our security, so if we build a culture of managing risk effectively, it will lead us to security, and security will lead us to peace. Let's manage the existing and emerging risk together. For more information on the Risk Roundups, to watch the Risk Roundup videos or hear the Risk Roundup podcast, please go to riskgroupllc.com and do not forget to subscribe and share. Until next time, I'm Jayshree Pandya, host of Risk Roundup, signing off. See you next time. Thank you.